Hi, good evening. <clears throat> um, yesterday I posted a video about why reject Anua in PD. Since then I've removed the video. Okay, why I removed the video? Number one, I think basically it was based on emotions, my personal emotion. And uh, under the cer uh, certain circumstances, the video was made mostly due to emotions. Okay, uh, after much thinking and uh, talking to some people that I know, I think I don't agree the way it is done but I think it is high time Anwar must come back to the parliament and uh, be part of the government let's not forget all this happened way 20 years ago when reformacy started. Uh, I've been a very strong supporter of Anwar, but only lately when things was happening too fast, like the certain statements by PKR leaders, and certain statements by Anwar himself, I got carried away. But with all due respect, I think it is let's 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 think rationally. We started reformacy twenty years ago. In these twenty years we have been to Berse. We have, um, you know, uh, been hoping for a government change from the previous regime. And all this happened on the 9th of May, 2018. Uh, reformacy was started because of Anwar, by Anwar, and for Anwar. And in 2008, we saw the small fruit of reformacy when uh, Pakatan Rakyat then, compromising of uh, PKR, DAP and PAS, managed to form government in four states, uh, five states, sorry, five states. Uh, Kedah, Perak, Penang, Selangor, and Kelantan. Of course, uh, we did lose uh, Perak after some time to Barisan. Then in 2013, again we saw some... <coughs> Uh, improvement with Pakatan Rakyat and then not long after that the collapse of Pakatan Rakyat and the formation of Pakatan Harapan with uh, the coalition of uh, PKR, DAP uh, Pati Amana and the youngest of all uh, PPBM and in 2018, Pakatan Harapan managed to form government and denying the victory of Barisan National, which hold the power of government for 61 years. <coughs> yes, <coughs> in order 
to go into election and try to get support every individual party or a coalition will have a manifesto and pakatan harapan manifesto of uh, a five years term and uh, long term and a short term of the hundred days of course uh, if not all some of the manifesto for hundred days was accomplished but let's be rational 61 years of dirt you cannot sweep it under the carpet just like that you know so uh, yes we form government and Anwar was released and pardoned from prison and before that before the election the presidential council all the coalition party agreed that Tun Mahade will be the candidate for PM if Pakatan win, wins the election. Of course, there was the but there, provided that uh, Tun will hand over the premiership to Anwar in two years' time. So when Anwar came in and after four months, he is going to stand in a by-election in Portrickson, including me, most of the nation, we jumped. We thought we were betrayed. We, we, we thought that Anwar is going to come in and take over the premiership and then uh, have an uh, uh, agenda of his own and all that. But um, let's think. Okay, uh, yesterday I did say why Anwar did not ask the wife, uh, who is our DPM, Dato Sri Wan Aziza, to vacate her seat. Why Nurul, the daughter, did not want to vacate the seat. And why uh, Anwar went to PD. Okay, let's take rationally. Yeah? Number one, Wan Aziza is the DPM. If she vacates her seat, she cannot be the DPM. You see, automatically she have to vacate her DPM chair. So now we will be left by no DPM. Who takes over while waiting for the by-election? Okay, I, I will not mention name, but um, it's open to your own imagination. So... That is out of the question. That is one of the reasons why one Aziza cannot vacate the seat for uh, Anwar. Nurul Iza. Why Nurul Iza did not vacate her seat in Permatang Pau? Um, Anwar Ibrahim's stronghold. Anwar Ibrahim's family stronghold. You know. Now, Nurul Iza is the wise. Uh, Vice President of PKR Now Pakatan Harapan Is the largest uh, party In the Sorry Pakatan Rakyat PKR uh, Parti Keadilan PKR PKR is the largest Party in the coalition of Pakatan Harapan with 49 seats And Nurul Iza is the Vice, Chem, uh, Vice President of uh, PKR. Now, of course, if she vacates her seat, she won't be able to stand for election for five years. So, how can a vice president of the biggest party in the coalition steps down? Forget about family ties. Let's let's be professional about this. Let's think about an individual and their party post. Wan Aziza is the president and the DPM. Nurul Iza is the vice president of Pakatan. So, another thing, YPD. <clears throat> From all the states, PKR only have Menteri Besar in two states. That is Selangor and Negeri Sembilan. So, Anwar could either stand in Selangor or Negeri Sembilan. Don't forget, 
a by-election, you need the machinery. You need the support. You need the grassroots to support you. Johor Bahru and other state, the Menteri Besar are from PPBM. DAP, of course, in Penang and all that. So, to go into a by-election, you need support. Now, PPBM, even though they are in the coalition, but as an individual, as a human being, you always think that this guy is going to take over from our boss. So there, I'm not, I'm not accusing. I'm just uh, thinking that this might be happening. You know, might happen that you know, uh, no support from the grassroots work and all that. So I know I had only choice to stand in Slango or. Negeri Sembilan. Now, most of the people, <coughs> most of the MPs in Selangor from uh, PKR have got posts in party. And Port Dickson is in Negeri Sembilan. So, Daniel gave way, Dato' Daniel you make way for Anwar to stand. So I think that was what decided and discussed with due diligence before making a, a decision. So Anwar went for PD. Okay, never mind. Wherever Anwar goes, never mind. Now, the question is, Siti Kasim also said reject Anwar. Ambika did not say reject. Ambika is upset why uh, our Iron Lady Ambika, she is upset why Anwar did not ask the why for the daughter. So that part I've uh, on I've answered on my opinion of what I think. Of course, you don't have to take blindly what I said. This is my observation and my discussion with certain people. In fact, before making this video, I was just sitting with a friend of mine who is uh, let's consider him. Uh, someone who knows what's, what, go, what is going around. Huh? No names mentioned. So, uh, that one of the reasons uh, Anwar chose uh, Podrickson is because the Menteri Besar Negeri Sembilan is from PKR. Okay, that part done. I am still personally... Um, I won't say angry. I'm not angry because this is politics. If today you can be angry, you can want to murder each other. Tomorrow you can make love to each other. That is politics. Don't go far. Let's look at what happened to Amno and Pass. And uh, even our Prime Minister number eight, Prime Minister in waiting, Anwar also said, uh, you know, uh, his stand on Amno is K Sera Sera. I mean, if you all read um, today's uh, t um, portal news and all that. In fact, on my Facebook, I have posted something about that. Now, Tun Mahade is doing a good job. But he himself yesterday made a statement, a press statement, that he is 93 in two years' time. He will be 95. You know, and he said, as promised and as agreed, he will hand over the premiership to Anwar. Anwar is the eighth prime minister of Malaysia. That is according to Tun. So, uh, yes. So, um, what I'm saddened with is Rafizi Ramli. Everybody sympathized for him. He was a hero. When he uh, became a whistleblower for uh, certain issues, you know, uh, one MDB, uh, Sharizat Jalil's uh, Fitlock uh, 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 company, a two two hundred fifty million dollar grant by government. In fact, he was sentenced to prison. Yes, we all sympathize for him. Everybody made him a hero. But 
what Rafizi did after 9th May also took many people by shock. You know, um, bombarding number one, if I can recall, was the, I think it was more of the appointment of um, Lim Guan Ng as finance minister. You know, and then um, many other issues Rafizi been opening and now latest was uh, going against um, the cartel, the so-called cartel. I do not know why they call it the cartel and all that uh, in the PKR. Apparently, the cartel is compromised of Azmin Ali, Zuraida, and a few others. No, as um, Rafizi Ramli, what he is doing is breaking up PKR. His action is actually breaking PKR. See, a president and a deputy president of any political party have got a lot of influence. We must always remember, yes, even Anwar is the PKR president uh, to be named officially, but he won uncontested. Asmin being the deputy president and going for deputy, I'm sure he have got a lot of influence over uh, PKR MPs. Now, if this thing happens, there is definitely a friction. There's two camps, two sides in PKR. Now, that is bad. Bad for health, bad for Malaysian, bad for the government. You know, because PKR is now part of the government. They are not no more in the opposition. During opposition time, you can sack, you can do whatever you want. It will not give you any impact. But once you are in the government, it throws a lot. It carries a lot of weight. Okay. So, uh, as uh, Rafizi Ramli, I think, for the sake of the party, for the sake of Malaysia, for the sake of people of Malaysia who voted Pakatan Harapan, please, 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 Rafizi, don't be arrogant. Please don't be arrogant. Yes, you have your invoke and all that. Don't be proud of your invoke. Your prediction was not 100% right. Okay? You said zero seat for pass. At last pass took over Trangano and had 18 MPs. And they ruled with landslide victory, they won Trangano and Kelantan. So, Rafizi, don't just open your big mouth. You know, have your respect while it's still there. Don't let people lose the respect. You know, anyway, uh, that is what I've got to say about Anwar Ibrahim's candidacy in. PD and a bit of about Rafizi Ramli who should who is the capable candidate for deputy president in PKR wait for my another video till then good night take care